I would be lying if I said I wasn't excited about this. Our friends at Wavelink, after seeing the 2.5 gigabit hub review I did a few months ago, decided to send this over. This is a Thunderbolt 4 dock. This is the 13-in-1 uh, uh, Wavelink Thunderbolt 4 triple display docking station. Now, full disclosure, Wavelink did sponsor this video. And I did a video recently talking about how this channel is going to start taking sponsorships. This is the first one, obviously. But the reason I accepted the sponsorship, and hopefully they don't kill me for saying this. I'm actually going to show you. If you look on screen right now, I actually asked them the criteria of doing the sponsor video. And they said, list the pros and cons. This is the type of sponsor I want to work with. They are so confident in their product that they're like, just give it all like just you know pros cons whatever so we're gonna do that today so we've got the wavelength box here it is a huge box and it's actually labeled thunderbolt 4 triple display docking station thunder dock elite i have nothing against the 2.5 gigabit hub i actually love it i use it every day like every day i use that thing because i bought the m3 max macbook pro back in january and because i need thunderbolt and i need a few other things on my desk my desk has become kind of a wired hot mess and hopefully using this, we're gonna fix that. So let's take a quick look at this. Let me flip it over. Okay, so few specs to go through. Looking at the back of the dock, we've got DC 20 volt, eight amp, 160 watts. The computer's gonna charge with 96 of that. The remainder is gonna go to power peripherals that you have plugged into it. Then you have a pair of HDMI 2.1 ports. And if you're going single display out at 8K, you can do 8K 60 and you can do 4K at 120, which is actually pretty sick. Editor Sean here. Okay, so a couple of things. Right now, I'm in the middle of testing the Wavelength Thunderbolt 13 and one triple display dock. And there's something you need to know. I'm currently on Mac OS 14.6.1 at the time of recording this. So that's the latest Mac OS version out at the moment. The problem is that Mac OS has this inherent limitation and the processor I'm using is the M3 Max. It's the top end M3 Max, but this display limitation is just an Apple thing. It's annoying. On Windows, you can have three external discrete displays where on Mac OS, you can have two. So what happens is the two HDMI ports on the rear of the Wavelink on Mac OS is gonna be mirrored. And the only way to get two displays out of the Wavelink is to go one display out of the HDMI, either of the HDMIs. To get a second discrete display, you have to go through the USB-C Thunderbolt 4 downstream port on the back of the dock. I'm letting you know this because it seems that Apple is just extremely, extremely, um, I won't say limited, I think they're just really strict in terms of the way the bandwidth is allocated through Thunderbolt 4. So that's something to keep in mind. Anyway, back to the video. Then you have a Thunderbolt 4 downstream port so you can daisy chain through that. You'll get 40 gigabit. You can also use that as a display out if your monitor is um, USB-C or Thunderbolt. So that is pretty awesome that that's included. You can only get 15 watts power delivery through that, which is fine. I mean, if you're using the dock correctly, you're gonna use that downstream port to actually you know, daisy chain stuff. Like for me, I use um, a universal audio Thunderbolt sound card. So that's what's going in there. And then we have three more USB-A ports. So we got another 10 gig, love to see it. And two USB-A five gig ports. I can't believe those are the low speed ports these days. So I guess I'm gonna plug in my stream deck into one of those. And then finally, last but not least, you have a 2.5 gig RJ45 ethernet, just like the Wavelink 2.5 hub. We are bringing 2.5 gigabit to your desktop. And this thing is super affordable. Oh, and I forgot to mention um, on the one side of the dock, there is a Kensington lock. So if you want to secure, you can. And obviously in the box, you're going to get your adapters. You're going to get a Thunderbolt cable, quick start guide, all that. But instead of telling you that, let's open this. Don't have a Jerry rig everything knife. But if I keep getting sponsors from like Wavelink, maybe I'll uh, pick one up. All right, let's get this open. And we have the dock, which is wrapped in this plastic sheet here. I'm just gonna put this off to the side for a moment. And we have our packaging. And if we lift the packaging, take this out. All right, we got a quick start guide. Cool. We have a Thunderbolt cable. Very cool. And, ooh, what is this? Okay, we gotta talk about this. The first implementations of um, Thunderbolt um, Thunderbolt 3 um, and USB-C, 
the tolerances on the cables were not exact so you would buy like a macbook and it would be like super loose and that's changed um apple's done a really good job of kind of tightening down on that the problem was like on the CalDigit TS3 that I reviewed like years ago if you looked at the cable the wrong way it would disconnect so what Wavelink has done and a few other companies are doing this and I feel like all the Thunderbolt dock companies need to do this they include this um locking screw so the cable basically slots in here and then I'm going to assume that on the dock at the top of the port there's like a little hole and then this just goes in and you tighten and it secures the Thunderbolt cable into the dock. Very, very, very cool. And then obviously we have our power cord, our power brick, and a driver download link sticker. I'm not gonna use the quick start guide because essentially this is plug and play. So let's move this and this off to the side. We'll bring our clip in. Let's get the dock out. This thing feels sturdy. Oh yeah, this is like a solid piece of finished metal. You got vent holes that flank each side. There's the Kensington lock I mentioned, right? There's all of our ports. Very cool, okay. I don't know how I feel about this button. We're gonna test that. Yeah, so typically what would happen is you would take your cable and plug it in. And I mean, that's pretty good. The tolerance looks pretty good. Actually, yeah, that it's kind of firm. I go into each port. Yeah, this is stiff. I like it. Yeah, these aren't going anywhere. Awesome. But for added security, what you would do, let's see if I can do this on the first try. Basically what I have to do is throw our Thunderbolt cable in this thing and probably just pull back. Yeah, there we go. So it sits flush like that and then this pin comes forward. So I guess when I plug it in so that goes in by the way um you'll notice the top camera is not on right now because the battery died so we're just gonna let that charge and while that charges i'm going to affix this straight in if we look at this yep we are plugged in don't attempt this yeah it's not coming out that is awesome again do not attempt to do that the stock is great sitting here on this table, but let's take it to the computer room and see what we can get done. And let's see how we can improve the setup. Welcome to the hot mess that is my computer room. And I'm kind of working stuff out, throwing stuff out, cleaning up. And one of the things I want to clean up is this hot mess that's going on with the MacBook. So if we take a look under this monitor, you will see the hot mess. Don't mind this thing. <laughs> this is actually a power meter for my Hackintosh to actually emphasize how inefficient that thing is compared to the M3 Max. But anyway, so if you look here, you're going to see HDMI is coming out of here. And I've got another Thunderbolt cable here that's actually networked into my Hackintosh for um, 40 gigabit between the two machines. And then I have MagSafe and I have the Wavelink, the original Wavelink 2.5 gigabit hub. That's hooked up in there with ethernet, running one of my monitors, so one of these. And the other one obviously is going to the second monitor from the other HDMI port. And then I have another Thunderbolt cable going in for my universal audio um, Apollo X4. So what I wanna do is I actually wanna make this my main display. And then this one here, this will be my secondary display. And if I play my cards right, I'm gonna mirror it so that this display gets mirrored up to the TV, which is just playing something off Apple TV right now, just like a screensaver. So anyway, uh, I got my work cut out for me. So it looks like um, I better get to this. Okay, not the cleanest setup, but it looks like I'm gonna have to do some work on this. But basically, if I were to open Edge, and let's chuck you over here. Do not buy the DJI Mic 2 transmitter that comes as a solo mic, just the mic. Okay, look, it's only a, looks like it's working. Sweet. If you've been on the channel before, you know that I like to stress test things and put them through their paces in very unique ways. So I figured I would actually make this a segment on the channel. So without further ado. 
stress mixer. Yup, that's happening. Quick update on the wiring situation. Okay, so we got a few things going on here. Um, the downstream port in the Wavelink Thunderbolt dock is actually being used to drive my main monitor. And then my second monitor, um, by the way, I got a camera behind me. You can see the setup here. So the second monitor right here, this one is coming out of the HDMI port. And then the TV, which is above everything, is a mirror of this one, right? So if I show you with this camera, you'll see like this is monitor one. This is monitor two and it's mirrored up to monitor three. Now looking at the screen that I'm recording, you're gonna see these two monitors showing up here. Fun fact on Mac, if you want more granular control of a lot of the OS, just hold option and click and look at that. We have our full list of resolutions and we even have like this checkbox, this toggle, which will reveal the non-retina resolutions. And I have that for both. Yeah, so as you're gonna see, we are set to 3840 by 2160, which is 4k awesome okay so let's get out of this and right here i have insane animations in 8k ultra hd and if you look here i'm actually set to 8k not that any of these displays are in 8k but it's more to make a point here so let's drag this over and full screen it okay and let me turn on looping and hit play and sound is playing through it i'm actually um i'm going thunderbolt for my sound card directly into the computer. I've plugged it into the Wavelink, it works totally fine. Um, the only thing is that I actually wanna push as much bandwidth as possible through the dock to test this. And speaking of that, let's go back to the screen recording. So now if we look at the right, we got two terminal instances open and they're both running iPerf. One is client, one is server, okay? This test right here is the 2.5 gigabit ethernet that is in the Wavelink dock. Okay, so the computer that I'm testing iPerf with from the M3 Max is actually my Hackintosh with 10 gigabit. And you're gonna see something here. You'll notice this is the download test and we're getting like 1.5, right? It, it fluctuates and I'm gonna explain that in a minute. But if we look at our upload test going to the Hackintosh, we're like pinned at 2.33, which is within margin of error and including network overhead for the download, which is fine. But why do I have five instances of Blackmagic disk speed test open? Um, I have five things we're gonna try. We're gonna do something a little bit interesting. We're gonna plug in, let's see. First, we're gonna work with this card reader. This is a 10 gigabit uh, dual card slot reader, which is pretty cool. And then I have two of these USB-C enclosures. So they do 10 gigabit to plug them in though, because I only have one USB-C uh, 10 gig port on this. Remember these from the Wavelink video? These USB-C, or sorry, USB-C to USB-A adapters that are 10 gig capable. These are clutch right now for this test. Also, the front of the computer has a SD card slot. I don't have micro SD, um, so I can't test that. And basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna plug in one of the hard drives on the rear USB-A 10 gig port, one of the hard drives on the front USB-A 10 gig port, and then the um, card reader is gonna go into the USB-C 10 gig port on the front, and then the SD card is gonna go into the slot on the Wavelink. By the way, if you wanna open multiple instances of an app on Mac, I don't recommend doing this with like every app because some apps use temp files and it becomes a hot mess, but basically you just open terminal and you type in open space dash NA. NA stands for new application, but again, open space dash NA space open quotation. And then the name of the application, the way it's written exactly in your applications folder. So for Blackmagic speed test, it is written as Blackmagic space disk space speed space test and then close bracket. And then once it opens, go back to terminal, repeat that command however many times you wanna open set app. So we've got the disk speed test open right here. iPerf is running, so let's start plugging stuff in. So first things first, let's get our hard drive plugged in. By the way, there is a free um, USB-A on the back, and the only reason I'm not plugging anything into that is because I'm out of drives. <laughs> it's, it's a whole thing. So we've got 
Project Cop. I think it's supposed to be Project Copy, but sure. So let's plug in the other SSD. Okay, that came up. It's a Sabrent 256 gig. Not the fastest drive, but it will serve our purpose. Let's plug in the memory card that's going directly into the Wavelink. And then finally, once that comes up, yep, Lumix. And then we will plug in the dual card slot. All right, so we have five drives. Let's start loading this up. So to kick this off, we're just gonna go in order here. We're gonna start with the Sabrent on the first disk speed test. On the second one, we're gonna add our Project Cop. <laughs> on the third one, let us add Lumix. And on the last one, or sorry, the second last one, we're gonna add the second last drive that came up. And finally, I think it's 256 gig dash one, yeah. All right, so they're all added. Before I start this test, I'm gonna give a disclaimer that I am not thinking that this is gonna work at all. I think either a drive's gonna disconnect or something's gonna happen because again, we are pushing 4K60 twice and then we're mirroring one that's a lot of bandwidth for the dock to handle and as it stands right now it's not super warm it's like it's a little warm but it's not like the cal digit was um where it basically warped the desk this desk was custom made with a coated epoxy and well yeah that's all from the heat from where the dock has been resting so just keep that in mind all right ready set go one two three four five Okay, the first observation, okay, so we are looking at the upload in iPerf and it has dropped significantly. The other thing is, is that these speeds aren't great because we're splitting bandwidth, okay? Uh, the Stream Deck is here and it works, but it's USB 2, it, it literally, like, it doesn't really equate to anything to add this to the mix, but it works. Yeah, looking around, we're splitting bandwidth, but you're gonna notice if I go over here to the YouTube video, we're not getting any um, delay. The first observation that I'm getting off the bat, the bandwidth priority is going to the displays, which is actually really good because the last thing you want is to like have glitches and all that kind of stuff on screen. But this looks really smooth, okay? So again, that's our, what is this? This is our upload. No, sorry, this is our download iPerf which isn't doing great. And then if we go over here, same kind of idea, we're seeing a struggle in terms of um, bandwidth, but again, we're maxing it out. And if I put my hand on the dock, it is not super hot at all, which is fantastic. So let's actually kill all these speed tests and run them individually. So first thing you're gonna notice is the iPerf is actually picking back up. Our upload via iPerf over the 10 gig network using the 2.5 port on the Wavelink looks pretty good. The download leaves a little bit to be desired. I'm gonna get to that in a little bit. That's running. So here, while that's running, let's run a speed test on, I believe this is the Sabrent. Yes, so the Sabrent, it's getting like 700 megabytes a second, 650 megabytes a second. That's about as expected because this drive wasn't super great. Pretty good. Right now we go over to Project Cop. This one's actually a Samsung, uh, I think it's like a 960 Pro in an enclosure. And 800's not terrible, that's pretty good. The drive does have some stuff on it, so I mean, it's gonna vary in speed. All right, now we go to the SD card that is located on the front of the Wavelink. And the theoretical maximum of that SD card slot is 312 megabytes a second. Let's see what happens when we get to the read test. There's a lot of stuff on that card I have to offload, so. Okay, I mean, it's performing, which is important. And then we have our ProGrade, this reader right here. The ProGrade is capable of doing 280 megabytes a second read and 180 megabytes a second write. Sorry, the cards are capable of that. The reader can apparently do full 10 gig. So if we do the first card, our write speed is supposed to be 180. And it looks like we're actually getting over that, which is pretty awesome. It's dropping, but I feel like it's gonna settle in around 180, which is pretty much expected behavior. Okay, we'll just stop that one. Let's go to this one. Yeah, same kind of deal. 
which is pretty interesting. You know what? Actually, let's try this because this is the same card slot. Yeah, so both cards simultaneously, we're getting, yeah, proper write speeds because again, 180 megabytes a second is the theoretical max of the cards and the average is dropping, but I mean, that is very acceptable. Let's see what happens on the reads because the reads can do 280 megabytes a second. Okay, not terrible. You know, it's a little bit less, but again, these cards do have data on them and I'm pretty sure with an empty card, you're gonna get on full speed. What I find that's extremely interesting is that the dock is holding up. Again, it's not even getting that hot. All the disk speed tests are done running. I'm just running the dual 4K test there, but let's open up speed test from Ookla. I'm on Bell Fiber to the home, eight gigabit. And let's see what we get. So we are hovering just under 1900 megabit down. And then our upload is around 2350, which is expected. When I reviewed this a few months ago, I plugged this into the M3 Max and I had problems with the upload, which I thought was interesting. And then Apple released the Mac OS update, which fixed it. So I get the full speed on this thing. I wanna show you guys something. We have a relic from the past. Okay, it's the not so distant past. Look, a touch bar. This is the 2019 or 2020 MacBook Pro. This is the last Intel MacBook Pro that Apple released. Now, the naming is a little confusing. It's a 2019, but it was refreshed in 2020 with the AMD 5600M because Apple doesn't know how to name things. The iPad Air is supposed to be thinner than the Pro, thus the Air moniker but the Pro is more feature rich and can do more, but will probably throttle while the Air is thicker, but not as capable, but the Pro. This computer shipped with an i9 eight core, 64 gigs of RAM, the AMD 5600M, as I just explained, and a large hard drive. This is actually a replacement computer because my 2017 had butterfly keyboard issues. So looking here, our built-in display, right? is set to default, which is fine. But then if you go to these two, they're all working, they're all in 4K as expected. Let's open speed test. We'll hit go and let's see what happens. We're getting the full download. Now, sometimes this works and times like now when I'm recording, it doesn't. Usually I'm getting 2300 both ways. For some reason, I'm just gonna keep running this until it starts acting properly because for some reason, Mac OS is very weird. Um, you have to run the test a few times on the older Mac OSs. I'm not totally sure why, there we go, yeah. I don't know why it does that. But what this suggests to me is that it's not Wavelink's fault. This is an Apple problem. Now, if you remember, the Wavelink Hub had the same issue with the upload, where the upload would struggle. However, using this thing, I was able to plug it into this and plug it in an unsupported 2012 MacBook with a much older Mac OS on it and get full speed. And then Apple did the update to Sonoma fairly recently, which fixed problems with this. I don't know if anybody at Apple is actually watching my videos, but if you are, yeah, Thunderbolt needs some love here because that's messed up. Like the question I have is one, is it Sonoma or two, is it Apple Silicon causing this? So I'm not totally sure. And the thing is this was, and still is at times my DJ computer and I use it for other things. And unfortunately I can't update the OS on this for essentially certain purposes. It's not that the computer can't handle it, it's that I don't want to update it because I don't want to break some of my apps that I use that don't work on my M3. Also, if you like the deep dive tests where I pull off stress mixer, then I guess this is the part where I say like subscribe, blah, 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 moving on. After using this dock for just under a week, I got a few thoughts about it. So I wanted to talk about the power button. You're not likely to hit this by accident. It does shut the dock off, but what this also means is that if you have a um, media plugged into it, like external hard drives or SD cards, and you hit the button, it's not going to safely eject the media. Like it's not gonna finish the reading and the writing. So keep that in mind that you have to safely eject your stuff first. Otherwise you could potentially risk data loss, especially if you're doing a write to say an external hard drive. I like this thing. I have a few pros. I have a couple of cons and I don't blame Wavelink. 
The first pro obviously is the vast amount of IO on this device for such a low price. As a matter of fact, at the time of filming this, Amazon has a lightning deal on it. So I will throw that affiliate link in the description. If you use it, it helps out the channel. Great dock. The cons I want to point out are not really related to Wavelink. It's related to Apple and Mac OS specifically. Mainly the, the first big one for me is that these ports, these two are shared on Mac OS. On Windows, these are discrete, these two. Okay, and this isn't a display link dock. This is just Thunderbolt. So it is like native display support. But in Mac OS, the problem is, is that these two ports are gonna be mirrored. And then if you want a second or first, depending on how you configure your system, it will come out of your Thunderbolt 4 downstream port. Leading to my second gripe. And this again, this one's not Wavelink's fault. I'm, I won't even blame Apple for this. Thunderbolt licensing is pretty expensive. Now I mentioned that I have a Thunderbolt sound card and I have a Hackintosh that I network via Thunderbolt. What I would have liked to have done was run, say display out, out of the lightning downstream port and then run my Thunderbolt sound card in another port and then run my Hackintosh network in another port. And then obviously using the uplink port that's on the front of the dock, that would have been cool to just use at the computer. And then I'm using one cable to connect everything. The problem is, is that that dock does exist by Wavelink, but it's expensive and it's not Wavelink's fault. It just costs more to implement more Thunderbolt 4 controllers to handle extra downstream inside the dock. I would flip one of these uh, five gigabit ports, like maybe shift everything over a little bit, right? So basically you go 10 gig, five gig, then this five gig, I would actually throw on the front and this um, upstream port, I would have preferred it on the back next to the downstream port only because it's kind of cumbersome to have like your computer off to the side and then a cable kind of going across your desk. That would have been nice if it was on the back. Uh, Wavelink, if you do a Rev 2 or a version 2 of this, maybe consider throwing them both on the back. Although that could easily be solved by turning your dock sideways, I guess. The weird Mac OS 2.5 gigabit issue that I just outlined is super annoying and it's not exclusive to this dock. It's I've seen it on other um, 2.5 gigabit docks that I've actually consulted some friends about. It's like a known issue with Mac OS Sonoma. Unfortunately, all my friends with Mac OS Sonoma are on Apple Silicon having the same problem. So it's kind of inconclusive. If you know if this happens or not on Mac OS Sonoma on an Intel MacBook, uh, let me know in the comments below. I know I mentioned that I'd like to have some downstream ports, like some extra ones beyond the single, but I will say this, that if you're in the market for a really robust dock and it can handle multi-display and has a ton of ports and doesn't get really hot, and actually the rubber pads on the bottom really hold up. If I push really hard, I'll probably move the whole table. This is the dock. Okay, you're not beating price to performance on this, okay? Like, I'm sorry. You know, there are other brands out there that I've owned even that don't even come close to this thing. It's chunky, <laughs> like holding it, it feels like a weapon. Let me put this down. Shout out to Wavelink for sponsoring this video. I really appreciate it as my first sponsor on the channel. And I have a strong belief in this company because they've let me be completely 100% honest with you which I am very thankful for. Wavelink, if you wanna send over the uh, version with the three downstream ports for another sponsored video, I would not be against that. Otherwise, to be honest, I'm gonna use this thing for a very long time. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Sean, this has been Tech Mixer, and I'm out, peace.